Yeah. So however, one will be present in the framework uh, for integration test lifecycle, uh, which we built uh, for our project, and we think that it might be very useful to others. So our plan today is to firstly explain the problem which pushed us to create this framework, then give a quick overview of tooling which we are used within this framework and provide details on the solution. Introduction to the problem. So this is a project which we have. It's an OMG team converter L. It is written in Python and it is application for converting CentOS or Oracle Linux to RHEL. Yeah, I must explain a bit why this picture is here. There was a guy from organizations of this conference and who was assigned to us to help uh, to make the presentation looks better for auditory and he asked us to add pictures, but I don't know which pictures, so I will be adding just random pictures. This is one of them. So how to approach integration tests within our team? So some typical technical needs. Uh, it is complex manipulation with the testing environment, uh, operation system. So we, for example, we need to install Red Hat kernel uh, or, or on Oracle Linux. They need to reboot the system even multiple times during the testing. Then we need to imitate the interaction with the user. Uh, we need to adjust files, like for example, uh, some configs, install various, various uh, RPM packages. We need to access resources uh, on Red Hat intranet and we have to somehow deal with the secrets. And from an organizational perspective, due to complexity of the previous integration test framework, it was complex itself. The test language was different from the upstream, so not, not Python. Project maintainers were unable to cover the features by themselves with integration tests. And uh, how to organize a contribution process so new features won't be stuck waiting for verification. As a result, we uh, built, a, uh, so there was a separate QE engineers team who was covered our features with uh, tests. And we had a batch-based testing framework, which we need to maintain and the strong separation of the duties. At least it was before. Irrelevant picture. A new solution tool and overview. So uh, here we will, uh, so there is a three pillars of this framework. It's TMT, test environment, packet. Uh, so now I'm giving the word to the author of TMT, Peter Splickhaw. Take over, Peter. Uh, okay, uh, hello. So as Adam said, uh, my name is Petr Sprichal. I'm from the OSCI team with focus on improving uh, processes and, and tools. And one um, of, um, of the tools uh, I've been working on recently is, is TMT. The test management tool is, is an open source project. And one of the main motivations for creating it was to uh, create a very comfortable and super user friendly way how to uh, how to uh, manage tests how to work with them how to create them how to execute them how to debug test code so uh, on the next slide um, the tool itself like TMT consists of like uh, of three three parts uh, the first uh, the first is the specification which defines the test metadata so uh, in another <clears throat> in another way it's 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 um, the way how uh, the tests and the plans uh, are described. Uh, uh, the config is quite concise and, and consistent across across different places. Uh, the second part is the command line tool itself, which which provides this uh, functionality for for users to to uh, nicely work uh, with tests and efficiently work with them. And the next part is is the Python module, which which can be used from from Python scripts. Um, one of the important points we wanted uh, to address uh, with TMT is uh, to have a unified way how to enable tests across uh, across multiple places so that users do not have to learn new and new configs and new and new ways how to enable tests and how to work with them. So um, um, I'm glad that I can say that like this uh, this way uh, of enabling tests uh, currently works for GitHub projects. Uh, it's possible to enable tests in RHEL, Fedora, and CentOS stream, and in the in the future possibly some some other places. Uh, so um, now we wanted to give you some uh, for those who are new to TMT just a very brief introduction uh, so that you have some tangible uh, tangible idea of uh, how it works and how it looks like. 
So, uh, for example, here, TMT init minus minus template mini. This is the way how, how to get quickly started uh, with the minimal template, which creates a very easy uh, plan, which ena enables um, uh, some simple smoke test uh, with calling, uh, uh, with executing a simple script like, like TMT minus minus help. So, um, that was the simple one. If you have uh, more tests, more complex scenarios, you would you would uh, initialize your your uh, Git repository with uh, with some basic setup, and then you can use um, commands like tmt test create minus minus template shell template b clip. So here you see you can um, you can get quickly started with some initial skeleton, uh, which is prepared for you, and after you see the new files, you will uh, very very <clears throat> quickly know what to do. Um, on the next slide, um, the core part, of course, of TMT is to be able to run tests. Um, um, TMT run is basically all you need when you're coming to a new project. You would like to uh, contribute there, you do some change, and then you would like to run tests. So TMT run, this should be everything you need to safely run uh, all the test coverage which, which is available there. Uh, of course, there are some advanced features like uh, if you can move uh, a bit back, Artem, I, I would like just to, just yeah, to mention sure. you can you can do <clears throat> you can execute this in verbose mode uh, to see more details. You can investigate the results uh, of the previous runs. You can run until execute, which means like the provision preparation, everything is done until the test is executing, and then you can investigate uh, if there is some failure. You can use last login to uh, log into the guest and uh, do whatever you need. Uh, on the next slide, I think one of the uh, quite interesting uh, uh, <coughs> ideas or features of, of TMT is um, we have dynamic plugins for uh, individual steps. And for the provision step, we have um, multiple implementations. Currently, we, uh, we support running uh, tests in a container, in a virtual machine, connecting to an existing box or directly on, on the local machine. So uh, you can uh, you can choose whatever you prefer um, uh, and in this way safely or very quickly uh, run, run tests uh, uh, how you need. And uh, on the next slide, uh, there is a um, uh, uh, very brief mention um, about an example how to uh, share test code across projects. Uh, this is quite important thing. Uh, so instead of duplicating code in multiple places, one project can reference uh, tests from another project. And in this way, you can, for example, enable very easily enable integration testing of projects which, uh, which are closely related. Um, the next slide uh, shows just a very, a very um, simple example of a, a TMT run. So here you see the individual steps. First, we discover tests, uh, then we provision a guest for running, we prepare uh, the box so that it's ready for testing, we execute tests, then the report is done, and then the finishing step. So that would be it about the brief overview. And for all other information, you can you can have a look at the TMT reader dot site. And that's Thank about it for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Peter. Sorry for sometimes interrupting <laughs> or jumping ahead. No problem. Uh, yeah, so testing farms, this is a second pillar, and uh, Miro will describe it. So hello, everybody. Miro Watkerti, uh, the testing farm team lead. So testing farm is a testing system as a service. It provides a reasonable HTTP API to run tests against rel-like operating systems. Our users use the service to get rid of the burden to maintain a stable infrastructure for test execution and rather invest the saved resources uh, into their product. Testing Farm currently supports tests defined via TMT, as uh, introduced by Peter in the previous slides, and, and tests are consumed from a remote Git repository, which users define in the test request. TMT itself as a tool does not limit what test framework actually you write your tests in. So with TMT shell executor, actually, you can integrate any of them. I think this is important to mention. Next slide, please, Artem. So the current main users of Testing Farm include Packet. We will be mentioning Packet on the next slides, and others are Fedora CI and Rel CI. Currently, Testing Farm runs around 30,000 test requests per month as the current number, and we are planning to get a lot larger. So for viewing results in a unified way, we uh, provide basically a simple UI to investigate the test 
failures and errors. Artem will be showing that later in the slides. Testing farm, uh, next slide, please, Artem. So testing farm is cap capable to run tests in public or inside Red Hat network. In public, we rely on AWS. We provide Intel and ARM architectures. Inside Red Hat network, we provide all RHEL supported architectures via Beaker, OpenStack, and AWS infrastructure providers. The execution of the tests inside the Red Hat network, which is also used by Convert to RHEL in this presentation, makes it easy to qualify upstream code against RHEL nightlies or internal tests, something which was fairly hard to do before. That is important to highlight. And next slide, please. I will be reporting also for Packet because uh, Tomasz is on PTO, so uh, lucky guy. So about Packet, uh, next slide, Martin, please. So changes to open source projects are usually happening in the upstream repositories. So when a new upstream release is being integrated into the downstream distribution, it's already too late to provide feedback to some of the breaking changes. The workflow Packet is offering is to build your pull request changes and RPMs and test them via testing farm on downstream distributions of your choice, such as Fedora Linux or CentOS Stream. This way, uh, you would know right away if a dependency is sane or uh, some breaking change was included. So test it as much as left as possible. So Packet, next slide, please. Uh, so Packet provides a dashboard which contains a pipeline view and the overview of GitHub pull requests, build targets for which RPMs have been built and tested then via testing farm. The test results are actually on the right side here in this picture. Artem, back to you. Yeah, it's again, irrelevant picture. So now I will be describing this new solution, which was using those technologies, which guys I've just described. So how we wire all this together. So it's of course, based on TMT, TF, TFT testing farm and packet tools, uh, testing environment is declared using Ansible, which is uh, pretty known and popular within developers. So it's usually not a problem that developers could do this by themselves. Then test implement and using PyTest, which is industry standard for testing uh, for tests, and um, all st tests stored in the upstream, and secrets are handled uh, as environment variables stored in intranet. It's what exactly relates to secrets. So then uh, develop tests locally uh, and running them uh, using the VMs. So, uh, submit tests from local to be executed and test and farm. So it's if you like to test uh, to run a lot of plans and you do not want to. Uh, so, for example, you can develop tests uh, locally and run some of the tests in test and farm. So you could have some parallelism and better productivity. Then set of convenient features, a testing feature, which helps you to simplify uh, uh, development process or to solve complex problem in a very efficient way. And we need definitely a friendly CI system, which executes all the tests and internet for each merge request. And as a result, so this was what we achieved. And as a result, we, uh, contributors can write features and integra in integration tests because integration tests use PyTest. So it's also Python, very famous language. The engineers can do the same. They could write the features as well, and yeah, they can do integration tests. And external contributors can do the same. So they could cover their external features with the integration test. This was a huge win for our team. We got unblocked, so we start into merging actually our features. Uh, the, the team uh, performance gradually boosted and quality of the application rise gradually. Uh, as being uh, one of the developer, uh, I could say that uh, writing integration test for your feature give you so, so huge uh, experience and it improves the feature basically. So let's take a look to the code. Uh, so this is our converter uh, project upstream and plans are defined here. Uh, each uh, plan, team T plan, uh, starting from like preparation in Ansible uh, playbook, it runs Ansible roles where uh, it installs some testing dependencies, install Red Hat compatible kernel for Oracle Linux. Uh, so prepare the testing environment basically for running tests. And in test, we have test itself. And I forget to mention that plans are actually, they are kind of views to the test. So you could, with plans, you could use special system of tags or uh, tires to select which test to run. So the 
test itself uh, stored here. And for example, we could take a look. So this is a basic Python uh, language, uh, this convention, convenient feature converter, uh, which is uh, our utility. There we will provide in uh, command line uh, arguments and uh, dealing with some secrets. And then we expect in that once run and in the test environment converter L with this uh, argument, this text and logs will be here and uh, exit code will be zero. So it's simple. And then if we are doing something different, then we expect in some different text and we could imitate the user behavior by sending counter C. In this case, it's just to stop execution of the utility faster. So do not wait until the very end. And exit status, of course, not zero. So, uh, yeah, basically, let's go to some interesting places. So this is how we are dealing with the uh, uh, environment file. So we could refer the environment from the intranet URL, as you see. Uh, in this case, we are able to inject some secrets from intranet. Then uh, here, uh, just example how we are dealing with uh, configuration. So we have again convenient feature where we are replacing something that it is being restored. Uh, then we expect again something and yeah, this is more general feature, which is changing the another config. So we are changing the release number and testing again something. So uh, here is interesting in terms of uh, we have conversion tests. So we are testing converted system after reboot. So the, in the preparation step, we still could run the shell script that it is still PyTest. And in this case, it's it has advantage uh, because we have access to those convenient feature. And this test is just basically run the conversion and then the other test will be running on converted system. Okay, uh, so we pass through these links. Going next, this is how the CI looks with the packet, and this is how testing farm output looks like. So this is our plan. They are passed. This is how it looks like if you're running the TMT plans locally. So you could add more verbose information, of course. This is how to list all the plans to uh, for the given repo. And this is basically it. So uh, slides are available on my GitHub, GitHub, uh, GitHub, Shukov Green Talks, and you will see the DevConf framework for integration tests. This is it. Thank you. Uh, Zhukov Green, who uh, and data engineer in APSA. Uh, I love Python, Scala, and big data. Nero, yeah, be my guest, guys. <laughs> Present yourself. Yeah, I think we already did. Um... Oh, Senior okay. principal quality engineer when we were doing the our part, but yeah, I'm the testing farm team lead. That is important, and Petro already did his introduction. Uh, there was a question actually in the chat uh, about uh, if we have some uh, examples for how TMT is used for Fedora changes builds. Do we have some examples of some components which already onboarded TMT, Petra? I link there the Fedora CI quick start guide, which we have there, uh, and that is the main point if we want to use TMT for Fedora CI. For Packet, there is another page, I will link it, but it's all linked in the presentation uh, under under my slides. Yeah. I think a few more questions in the Q&A section. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'll read them out to you uh, for, for the sake of the recording. Um, how is, uh, from Chris Evich, how is downstream testing Say from malicious upstream or public changes. Example in a PR. Yeah, I, I can describe uh, and answer this question if you don't mind, guys. So, hi, Chris. Uh, the point is that this uh, integration tests they are not triggered in the CI uh, just by the commit, but only by a comment from the uh, upstream project maintainer. In this case, we are interested, but yeah, there is still, uh, you're right, that like if uh, during the review we miss something, then we will trigger and there is some risk. So that is one part. The second part is that basically the uh, tests uh, which we enable uh, to run on downstream are uh, are not uh, just, not anybody can enable it or any Red Hat project. So we, it, it's, uh, it goes under our review. So that is one thing. Also, the test artifacts are not shared in uh, upstream in that case. They are only available to upstream, downstream. And also the code that you are able to reference is just Red Hat.com. 
uh, own domains. Uh, so the Git repositories cannot be uh, basically just some public, uh, public uh, whatever GitHub that you can just run something. Uh, and we are working on some other additional security measures because, of course, uh, the this is a security concern and we are aware of it. But currently, this is how it looks like. So it's uh, it, there needs to be a special access uh, that we enable. It's not just anybody gets it. And we are very cautious here. Thanks, Miroslav and Artem. Uh, sorry again for my pronunciation. I, I don't know the correct ones. OK, once from Andrej. Uh, hi, any reusable examples how TMT is currently used for testing Fedora changes or builds? I think we, we answered that. That was the first question okay. I was reading okay. out. So okay. uh, I think that's done. Uh, and yeah. David, yeah. Could TMT yeah. replace yeah. Beaker in? I ever read this. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if I can. Yeah, please. Please care. Could, could TMT replace Beaker in DCI for using cloud environments? I mean, could, could cloud environments like EC2 where Beaker can't be used became, become there is uh, the ECP and no PX boot provisioning? Um, not TMT maybe by itself, but definitely like uh, like there is some overlap here and not sure if everybody knows like distributed CI. So uh, David, I think it's a wider topic to speak about, but uh, definitely there is an overlap we could speak about. I'm not saying replace because Beaker can provide a lot of different architectures, um, but yeah, I think it's a neat discussion. It's not just easy to answer if it could just replace it like that. We didn't have that. Uh, that conversation with anybody. So, yes, uh, and and for for connection connection uh, uh, with Beaker, we also did some um, intensive efforts to for, for those who are uh, trying to migrate their tests from the original formats and the old make file format to the new one, um, and the integration to make it make it working. Uh, the integration with with Beaker, so uh, it's possible. Uh, Using two ways, like uh, the workflow tomorrow, which is used for scheduling uh, scheduling tests uh, directly in Beaker, is possible to be used um, directly with, with TCMS. And, and for those teams uh, which have migrated tests to TMT, uh, but they don't want to use TCMS anymore, uh, it's it's possible also to export FMF IDs of the tests and then uh, feed them to the workflow tomorrow and run tests in Beaker. So, yeah, uh, there are multiple ways how to uh, how to connect connect the pieces together. Thanks, Maros oh. and Petr. Yeah. Hope that answers your question, David. Any other questions, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A section or in the chat itself. We are right on time. Great. We are two minutes early because we started late. So <laughs> very quick, very quick. Good work, guys. Yes. So well, then, thanks a lot. I think we should. Yeah, uh, please, Petr, carry on. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to thanks thanks all for, uh, to all who, uh, who who attended today's session, and see you somewhere around. <laughs> Thank you. For example. Bye. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you.